gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Kia Seltos. Now, this is not just an all-new car, it's a new brand altogether. Kia's debut model has landed smack in the middle of the SUV segment, which is right now really the core of the market. So this is really an important car. This car will also establish the Kia brand, the Kia credentials, so it better be good out of the box. And we are here on this really dismal, gloomy day in Goa to drive this latest SUV and tell you what it's about. We've got a bit of a break from the rain, so let's quickly take a look at the design. Now, the first thing you'll notice or should notice is Kia's signature tiger nose grille. It's pinched in the middle and is a styling element found on every Kia car. And on the Seltos, the tiger nose is superbly highlighted with this chrome strip, which has a very premium knurled finish. In fact, the Seltos looks very, very upmarket with lots of rich detailing. The headlights with their projector lamps, DRLs extending across the nose and vertical fog lights look a bit too busy, but at night you won't miss this for anything else. The rear is a lot cleaner and the sculpted tailgate and scuff plates is a nice dose of SUV muscle. So is the interior as impressive as the exterior? I'm trying to find a bad bit inside the Seltos' cabin and quite honestly, I, I can't really seem to spot one. I mean, everything I touch, feel, has got a quality, premium feel and look to it. The dash top, the texture of the plastics over here, this leather finish, even the glossy black finishes, very, very high quality. Steering feel feels fantastic to hold. The buttons got a lovely tactile feel. And if there's something that sticks out, it's this maybe this instrument binnacle which just seems like it's been uh, stuck on but uh, that's really subjective the Seltos in this tech line GTX plus spec is fully loaded and by that I mean fully loaded with more features than any car in its class you've got cool seats a Bose sound system wireless phone charging and of course the must-have sunroof and lots and lots more and between the 10.25 touchscreen, 7-inch MID and steering controls, you can operate and access the wide array of functions. It's got some many class first features. It's got something like air quality index which you can know the, the quality of air you're breathing inside the cabin it's got the usual stuff which is now becoming standard it's got connectivity it's a connected car it's got all the features which we'll get into a bit later and of course even stuff like a voice recognition let's try it out how can i help you what's the weather like today there will be thunderstorms with a high of 27 degrees it's going to be a wet test drive for sure. raining cats and dogs there's been absolutely no let up in the rain it's just been wet wet and wet so I'm gonna tell you what the Seltos is like in the wet well this car is really sure-footed and I think it stems from a chassis which is very stiff in fact this car feels very European in its feel it's got that tautness that stiffness it's uh, fairly responsive the steering could do with a little better feel but honestly for the kind of people who are going to buy this it, it does the job and what I really like is the ride and handling the balance it's got in fact even the ride it's it's not too firm not too soft suspension really well judged and uh, really top marks uh, for Kia I mean probably I would say this is uh, the best riding and handling Korean SUV I've driven yet but it's not exceptionally agile and likes to be eased into corners rather than hustle through them. And it feels best driven a notch down. Now Kia has launched the Seltos with three engines. 
you've got a 1.5 petrol you've got a 1.4 turbo petrol and you've got a 1.5 diesel now all these engines come with a six-speed manual as well as an automatic transmission and it's not the same automatic transmission each one gets a different kind of automatic and totally there are 16 variants of the Celtos so clearly what Kia wants to do it wants to carpet bomb the midsize SUV segment and offer some kind of variant at various price points so I started out with the 1.5 diesel mated to the six-speed manual now this engine develops about 115 horsepower which isn't terrific by class standards today but this engine doesn't feel underpowered at all in fact this engine just blew me away with its refinement it is so quiet so smooth and the power delivery also very linear very tractable it's got a really broad torque spread yes there's that little bit of turbo lag but it's very marginal but once the engine starts pulling once it gets into the meat of its power band it'll pull and rev all the way to 5000 rpm which is really good for a diesel in fact this 1.5 diesel will be the staple engine of the group powering a wide range of not only kia but hyundai models as well in the future what you need to know is that this engine already meets bs6 standards which in a way future proofs it when the tougher emission norms kick in Yes, the diesel with smooth performance and claimed fuel efficiency of 21 kilometers per liter is the practical choice and the one to pick if you are chauffeur driven. So how does it feel sitting behind the driver? I'm in the back seat and well, what can I say? There's far more space in here than I expected. Don't forget this is a 4.3 meter long SUV. It's more in the Creta category. It's not full blown like the Harrier and the Hector. It's not as big as those are. But even so, there's lots of space in here for four large adults. The legroom is terrific. Headroom is also great. Well, I'm not that tall, but even tall passengers won't have a problem because a little scoop over here so the head shouldn't brush against the headliner. The seats are comfy. A little short on thigh support over here, but uh, otherwise a great view out. Uh, large door pockets. Uh, you've got a place for your mobile over here, USB port, and this is pretty cool. AQI readout so you know the quality of air inside the cabin you've got a sun blind and even the rear seat it reclines a bit Kia seem to have thought of everything I've jumped into the 1.4 turbo petrol with has a 7 speed DCT now this version comes in the GT line trim. You've got these all black interiors, uh, nice uh, red leather stitching. So really a very sporty feel. This is the variant that puts the sports into the SUV and not surprisingly, it's the most fun to drive. The GT line's GTX variant is also the one that gets a heads up display, which can be customized with what info you want displayed. Again, the HUD is a first in class. The 1.4 turbo petrol, yes, very strong. It's got that real lusty mid-range. It is quite smooth, but I have to say both the engine and gearbox not quite as good as Volkswagen's TSI and DSG combo. But having said that, this is a very, very entertaining car to drive. What would have enhanced the fun factor even more are paddle shifts, but that's missing on this variant and you have to make do with the lever the old-fashioned way. But having said that, it's pretty keen to downshift and even from high revs, the gearbox plays ball. You have two sets of modes in this 1.4 turbo petrol. One controls the engine response and the other the level of traction for different surfaces. Now this gives you even greater control of the car. All new cars these days are coming with connected tech and the Celtos 2 is packed with it.
Now, connected cars, that's the next big trend. Every manufacturer is launching a sort of connected car and the Kia Seltos is a connected car as well. Now, what does that mean? Basically, it means that there is a SIM inside the car, embedded in the car, which talks to the SIM in your phone. And that kind of throws up a whole lot of features. And you've got the Uvo app over here. And with the Uvo app, which is a proprietary app of Kia, you can do a whole lot of things. But the party trick I like the most is that you can start the car from your phone from the outside. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? And once I've got the car started, I can even switch on the AC and set the temperature. Now I'm standing outside over here, but you can do this from your office. So by the time you go down, your car is nice and cool. Not good for global warming, but definitely good for cooling the cabin. Now let's see how the concierge service works. button inside your car. Where which point of interest to Yeah, can you take me to Goa Airport, please? Can you send me the map to Goa Airport? Sir, I check on my phone that there is a Goa International Airport. There is a Tavoli, Marmo Goa, 403801 India. That is 26.439 kilometers from your current location. Okay, great. Can you just send me the map, please? Sure, sir, I'm sending I send the link to your infotainment system. Please check. Okay. okay. Yeah, got it. Okay, sir. Is there anything else I may assist you with? No, thank you very much. Now, that's for lazy people who don't want to input a simple destination themselves. But there are some other useful features too. Well, with the Uvo app, it's like Big Brother is watching you because even from the comfort of your home, your office, or where I am right now, which is the lobby of the W Hotel in Vagator, I know exactly where my car is, what it's doing, how fast it's going, and whether it has exceeded a certain boundary or exceeded a certain time, uh, time duration. So it's got geofencing, it's got time fencing, and it's got a lot of other cool features. Let's have a look. The app does a lot of things. It keeps a track of your service schedules, the health of your car, your driving data, how fast you've gone, and you can even select the destination you want to go to and push it to your car's navigation unit from your phone. It's genuinely hard to fault the Seltos, which does everything so right. If there's a fault, it's more to do with Kia's wonky strategy of not offering the topmost trim level in a variant like the 1.4 turbo petrol DCT. But otherwise, rarely have we seen a car that is so complete, so well-rounded and so versatile. Okay, there's no four-wheel drive option, but other than that, it offers everything an SUV buyer could possibly want. The Seltos is the one SUV to buy if you can buy just one SUV. Kia's maiden product is an absolute winner. Renault Striber, four meters long, seven seats. It's a tantalizing prospect and a really difficult job. And we're here early at Renault's test track with a prototype now it's not the final car but we want to give you a flavor of what it's like a sort of teaser seeing the car for the first time as a result comes as a huge surprise yes renault has used more and more vertical space on successive rows but this is no telephone box on wheels Far from it, the driver has an interesting profile and it's even replete with nicely executed details. The sophisticated SUV-like nose, the wraparound rear windscreen, it looks super. And then there are those details. The bonnet is muscular, the rising belt line gives the car an interesting tip-forward stance and what helps break up the mass is the kink above the rear door handle. I even like the rear a lot. The rear windscreen isn't vertical, so it doesn't look van-like, and those long vulture beak-like taillights are pretty neat. The cladding at the bottom, along with the mesh finish, also give it a bit of an SUV look. 
Renault's designers have also cleverly hidden an unsightly bulge on the roof by putting the roof rails right in front. Now the big surprise for us when we saw the interior of this car was how well it's built. It's not exactly quid quality, it's a big step up from there. Look at this stuff, nice matte finish here. Of course, it isn't soft touch, but it looks like it is. You know, you almost like want to press this and see whether that's soft. These lovely dials, they've got these wedges that tell you the engine speed and other information of that. Nice big screen here and lots of storage. The storage here, despite having an airbag, is one here. This one is cooled, so is this one here. Two cup holders, a tray here. In fact, you could move half your house into the car. Renault has managed to deliver a good mix of colors, textures and scratch-resistant matte grain, which makes it look a bit richer. A few well-chosen metallic highlights and the layered look also give it that required upmarket feel. Sitting in the center of the dash is an 8-inch touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now this car is all about space for the passengers as well and if you're not using the third row, you can slide this seat and this one as well all the way back. And look at the space here. Someone can sit here comfortably, there's loads of leg room, we pushed it back enough absolutely super and the seat is nice and supportive it's a long seat you can recline the backrest so a pretty comfortable place to be the seats have a large range of movement so finding the right mix and match is easy and there's enough to make passengers feel comfortable Renault has also given you a vent in the B pillar and there are also other clever touches a blower control for rear passengers and although there's no USB slot, you do get a 12 volt socket. Now to access the third row, you've got to flip this seat forward. And surprisingly, it's super slick. Two fingers and it goes up. Now what Renault's also done is given you a big door opening. This is a pretty large door considering the size of the car. And getting in actually is pretty easy. Once that's down, Put the seat back up. Now there's sufficient leg room here, even with someone who's tall sitting in the second row. And I'm pretty comfortable, truth be told. It is a bit low, but it isn't extremely uncomfortable or unusable. There are other things you need to pay attention to. There's a 12 volt socket here. You can plug in a USB to that. The seat belts, of course, aren't retractable. There's no space for the mechanism. And because of the theater seating where the front seats are low, the second row seats are a bit higher and these are slightly higher than that. Visibility isn't too bad despite the smallish water glass here. With all three rows up, luggage space is just 84 liters. But of course you can flip and fold the third row or remove it completely. In fact, doing that opens a massive 625 liters. The brief drive around Renault's track also proved that like all Renaults, the suspension is pretty absorbent and that the ride is comfortable. It goes over large paver blocks on the track without feeling too unsettled. And smaller bumps aren't too much of an issue either. Also when I drive around the few constant radius corners on the track, the steering feels well weighted. The driver does roll a fair bit in corners and overall grip isn't great but it doesn't feel nervous or edgy at speed either. Under the hood, there's a one liter engine that's based on that of the Quid, but with variable valve timing for both improved low and high engine speed performance. The engine now makes 72 horsepower. Unfortunately, engine calibration is still a work in progress, but our brief drive of this prototype did tell us that while initial responses are not good, there's a nice swell in power soon after you hit the throttle. And then the driver pulls nicely for a bit after that. What also makes it easy to drive is that the gears slot in easier than on the quid and the long travel clutch is good for driver comfort. Renault is expected to launch the Triber sometime in August with prices expected to fall somewhere between five and seven lakhs, roughly the price of a Hyundai Grand i10 it's likely to be the only car of its kind at this price point. 
capable of genuinely seating seven in relative comfort, expect to be drawn to this one, even if you are not thinking of buying a seven seater. Why have five seats when you can have seven? More for less. The formula always works, every time. And now it's time for fuel efficiency tips with Servo Futura G+. Underinflated tires increase fuel consumption. Fill them as recommended. A car in good health will consume less fuel compared to a badly maintained one. 